Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. Today is the last stage of Walta a Catalonia, stage number seven. It's gonna be a hard day. They're gonna do 130 plus kilometers, about 80 miles. At this distance, all pro riders can ride incredibly hard for the length of this particular kind of stage. Now it's a crazy stage tactically because 32 riders are off the front with a four minute plus or minus gap, 50K to go in this stage. They're gonna do big lap out before Barcelona, then they're gonna come into Barcelona and do six circuits with a hard climb on there, about 2K long, but steep in sections, 15%. So with a group of 32 riders, most of the teams from behind, if not all of them, minus Ineos, are represented in this front group. Even Movistar have at least three riders in this front group. A lot of teams represented. So the sprinter teams, like Peter Sagan that I predict, predicted yesterday to win today's stage, they're not even trying to bring this gap back down. All it is is Ineos riding on the front and just setting a, a pace that will bring them into the circuit and keep Adam Yates... G. Thomas, and of course, Richie Port, first, second, and third on GC. Now let's go up to the break of 32, and let me give you a scenario of what's happening up here. Because this is really mass chaos when you have this many different guys up there, and none of them are outright a favorite climber that can drop 31 of those riders, or a fast sprinter that can come to the line and beat 31 of those riders. There's not many guys up there that have these fabulous numbers. Like Mobistar had three, but they're not their best guys. They have Alejandro Valverde in the back. Up front, they have Marc Soler, who's going okay, but he's not going fabulous. So chemistry in this front group is going to be chaos. That's, that's all you're going to get out of this. You really don't have any other option. Now, Thomas DeGent, he's a veteran. Okay, This is what he does. He goes on these early breaks like today. And he won't disappoint us. First lap onto the six lap circuit when they go up the climb, he lights it up the climb. And there behind us, the Bahrain rider, Matej Mohoric, he's trying to close the gap and he's not making up time on Thomas de Ghent during the attack. But he goes over the top and has this great descending skills called the super tuck. And he can do it in pretty amazing fashion. This kid's really fast on the descent. He drops Jasper, who's with him, the archaic rider, goes over the top and gets dropped on the descent. We'll see that as they come out of the last corner there. It's Mahoric up the road with Thomas DeGant. And the rider that was on Mahoric's wheel, the Bahrain rider's wheel, as the descent started, got gapped off and got dropped on the descent. Now guys, you normally don't forget when you get dropped on a descent. I remember doing Tour of Lombardy back in the day with Damiano Cunego. He dropped me hardcore along with three other riders on the last, second to last technical descent. And we're near the finish line to win one of the monuments of the race of, of the year. Lombardy is one of five of the monuments. It's the last race of the year in October. I'm in the front group. There's four of us, five of us at times. And Demiano just drops us flat out, like blows us out of the water. I shoot past the guys that were just in front of me, go through the next corner to try to bridge the gap. And I almost ended up going down 20 foot drop into someone's garage. That's how crazy it was. After that, I hit the brakes, relaxed, hoped that we could catch him in between the descent and the last climb to the finish. We didn't. He won the stage. I ended up 7th or 11th on that particular day. I still remember it to this day. Do not like getting dropped on the descent. That was the one time that really sticks in my head. Another time Peter Sagan dropped me pretty hardcore when we were doing Trino Adriatico in some crazy conditions. I can live with that one. He's dropped everybody. But today, the young kid, the young French kid from Archaic Samsek, he will remember getting dropped <laughs> by Mahoric on this particular descent because it was pretty ugly, the gap that he had at the end. So he's out of the picture. He's not going for the win. We have two guys up front, okay? Mahoric and the legend Thomas DeGent from Lotto. Now, every time you see the descent, Mahoric is putting time into Thomas DeGent and opening up a gap and we come out of the bottom of the corner and Thomas DeGent has to 
accelerate on the climb. He's not panicking. He already knows he can outclimb this rider. He knows he doesn't have to take an 80 kilometer an hour <clears throat> descent in the super tuck in order to stay with him because he has time. He can bring him back right after the right hand turn as you come up the climb. Now, when they first went, the reason they're given that gap is you look behind right away. You can see the group of 29 guys that are left or 39 guys that are left. They're all disorganized. They won't work well together because guys are tired from being a week into this race. Some guys can't climb. <laughs> some guys are favorites and so the other guys aren't going to work with them. And some guys, honestly, they just want to go home because they're passing their team bus on these laps and they're very tired. So they, it's easy for them to pull out. They just want to get this stage over with. They want to get rested and start recovering for some of the classics that are coming. And of course, tour of the Basque Country that's coming for the stage racers. So that's really what allows these two riders to get away. Thomas against power, the speed of Mohoric on, in the super tuck down the descent, and the fact that the group is so big behind that it's disorganized. Now, I want to say something about Thomas again because on the descent, the announcer's talking the whole time about how much he's going to have to suffer on the last lap to make up and how he's going to keep the young Mohoric from being able to drop him and win the stage. Guys, I've, we all have seen Thomas Deget many times in these kind of scenarios. He doesn't get dropped on the descents. I haven't witnessed it before. He's, he can ride descents. He's just not taking a risk because he doesn't have to. Now, Mahorich is taking big risk for no reason because if you're going to wait for Thomas Deget anyways, then all you did was he spent time in the wind. Thomas Deget spent time in the wind. They're both wasting energy chasing each other. They get to the bottom. One sits up in front. One sprints to catch him. It's just wasted energy, wasted time. It's much smoother if you just figure out what the group wants to do. Also, and this is important, for the young kid Mohoric, you could save that card. If you really believe you can drop Thomas again on the descent, you can save that card in your back pocket and pull it out on the last lap. But when you're showing everyone your strongest talent, Thomas Deget knows that's your strongest talent. He's going to drop you going up the climb like he does with one lap to go. Thomas Deget puts in a big dig, drops him going up the climb and gets that gap. Now Thomas Deget knows that this kid's a super descender because he's already watched it five laps in a row. So now Thomas Deget, being the veteran he is, knows he has to put everything on the line because now it's for the win. When you're doing it with six laps to go, five, four, three, two, that's not for the win. When you're doing it with one to go, this is for the win, and that's why Thomas DeGent lays it all out on the line. You look at the speed of his descent. It's 5K an hour faster than any time before that, so it wasn't that he couldn't do it before. It was that he didn't want to take the risk. Takes the risk with the last lap down the descent. Takes it in for a beautiful solo victory. Well done, Thomas DeGent. He's won here many times. On this particular stage, he's won once before, but he's got four or five wins here at Catalonia to his record in the last eight, nine years that he's done this race. Fantastic win. Now let's go back to the GC favorites because it's Movistar back there with about three, four laps to go, really putting in the hammer, trying to blow things up. They really blow the race apart to just the favorites. There's 10, 15 guys back there, all the top 10 favorites, minus Sepp Kuss. Sepp Kuss lost and got dropped out of the top 10 today, so he wasn't there. What I'm really thinking at this point in time is Movistar had a lot of guys up front, and so you'll see as each one of those guys up front are getting dropped, they're going back, and now they're pacing the Movistar team leader, Alejandro Valverde, up to climb at different times, trying to keep it hard for that particular, for Valverde, so he can try to, one, either drop some of the top 10 and move up a spot. He wants to try to get on the podium. So really what he's trying to drop is Richie Port and G. Thomas. But those guys have been sitting on all week. They haven't had to do a pedal and anger except for on a couple of the summit finishes. The rest of the time, they've had teammates like Luke Rowe and Rowan Dennis do the majority of the work and Jonathan Castor Viejo. Let's not forget him because he did a fabulous job today and throughout this whole week. So Movistar, their tactic, it's kind of in vain. Also, they let the gap go so big that they can no longer race for the stage win for Alejandro Valverde. The gap to DeGent is too far, so they can't get the time bonuses to help him move up. And of course, he can't drop the top three on general classification to try to move up onto a podium spot either. 
So Mobistar really started the week off failing and ending today failing too. You look at Lotto Sudal, they won stage one with Krohn, and then they bookend it with Thomas de Ghent with a fabulous win from the veteran who knows how to race his bike and knows when to go fast and when to go slow. And man, can he go fast when he wants to. Fabulous job from Lotto Sudel. One other thing I want to comment. Throughout the whole stage, I'm hearing the announcer, and he's talking about the Super Tuck. And we all know the Super Tuck's going to end here on April 1st. And he's talking about Mohoric, the Bahrain rider, being the first time he ever saw the Super Tuck and this kid invented it. All right, this kid's 26, 28 years old, whatever he may be. Very good rider, but he did not invent the Super Tuck, guys. I was doing the Super Tuck when I was 20 years old, and I am not 30 right now. I'm almost 50. The Super Tuck has been around for a long time. The craziness and how ridiculous that they're canceling or making it, making it so you can no longer do the Super Tuck because it's dangerous. It's so dangerous that we can do it. January, February, March, all the way till April of this year. So it's so dangerous that you could do it for three months out of the season. It's so dangerous that you could do it for the last 20 or 30 years, whatever it's been. Because I know I first saw it in the early 90s down in San Diego from my friend Dean Meyer. That was the first time I ever saw the Super Tuck brought to my attention. Once I started traveling and racing and you run into European riders, I know none of the European riders I had seen had ever seen the Super Tuck employed. And so that was the first time they had seen it. So as far as I know, it wasn't in Europe in the very early, we're talking 91, 92, wasn't in Europe in those particular years that I know of. And I know for sure it was there in San Diego and Dean Myers invented it. And it wasn't the 26-year-old kid, Mohoric, that, that was getting second on today's stage that invented the Super Tech. UCI is going to eliminate it soon because it's dangerous. In my opinion, I've never seen a crash caused from the Super Tech or any riders ever crash themselves because of the Super Tech. It's a ridiculous rule. They should keep it going. They say they don't want amateur riders to employ it. Guys, this is pro. That's like saying well, you're watching Formula One. You, you expect to drive your Honda Civic around your neighborhood like watching a Formula One race. It's absolutely ridiculous. They should keep it. It's beautiful. It's part of the sport now. It's been around for decades. Let's bring it back. Anyways, that's my take on the butterfly effect. Adam Yates, absolutely fabulous. Wins the overall. Enos, first, second, and third, plus the team classification and some stages along the way. It was fabulous racing. My pick, Sagan, he did not deliver for me today. Hopefully, he's saving the legs to get up to the Classic so we can see some big battles up there with Walt Van Aert and Matthew Vanderpool and, of course, the French rider, Julian Alaphilippe. We got good bike racing to come on the Butterfly Effect, and I'll see you real soon.